All right, so we've got three of the license plate reader trailers that we're gonna be going through this morning. We're gonna go through the physical deployment of the trailer and identification of the hardware on the trailer. All right, I know everyone here is familiar with LPRs, how they work, you've got them on your mobile units. Um, has anybody used the target alert service so far? TAS client, everybody's used it. This is gonna use the TAS client, it's gonna forward the alerts directly from this trailer to your MDTs, dispatch, whoever we set up to go to. So. As we're going through this trailer, you've got two cameras. You've got uh, four cameras, really. Two IR cameras and two color overview cameras, as well as IR illuminators in each of these housings. When you're going to aim these cameras, just like the mobile units, you're going to be looking for the glowing white hot license plate to be coming right through the center of your infrared view. Your color overview on these is always just to get the approximate position, which camera it is, and which lane you're going to, want to be aiming at. The camera that's closest to the road, so meaning once this is spun around, the camera that's closest to the, to the road is going to be shooting towards the outside lane. The camera that's on the inside of the road is going to be shooting to the near lane. All right? So, as far as overview on the trailer, you've got two 85 watt solar panels. So you've got 170 watts of solar. You've got three sealed 200 amp hour batteries in the back. There's zero maintenance required with the batteries, no filling with distilled water, none of that stuff. Then you've got a 55 amp battery charger in the back. To plug into the battery charger, you've got a marine grade cap right here, accepts a standard 120 volt extension cord. So it's just a standard plug and play. All right, so depending on sunlight conditions, you've got between seven and 10 days of runtime with these trailers. That might decrease over time, a few three, four years, the batteries start wearing down a little bit. That might drop a little bit, but right now you're gonna have seven to 10 days. That does depend on sunlight condition. It is solar assisted. So that means do not park it right underneath a, uh, right underneath a big oak tree and expect to get that full run time because that will degrade the solar coming in, obviously. All right, as far as deploying this trailer, currently it's in the stow position. To move it, unlock this safety latch right here and you're gonna pull out on the pin. You're going to then rotate the trailer until you hear it lock into place with a safety pin right here. Alrighty. You're again going to pull out on this pin. And crank the hand winch up. You'll feel it lock into place after it goes up a set amount. You don't have to stop there. If you do, it'll block a little bit of the front of the sign. Keep going up, that's there's a safety latch. So if this cable ever does snap, it has a stopping point. It's not necessarily where you have to stop. All right, the clutch on the winch itself is gonna hold everything up as far up as you want it to go until it stops. All right, so all of your signs, if we wanna walk around the back side here, your speed signs are all located here in the back. So before you go up with it, you're gonna to wanna to put whatever speed. You've got all of your different signs right here. They're just wing nutted in right here to the back. So just loosen the wing nuts up, take the reflective numbers off, put them up before you winch it up, and it's that easy. Just whatever your posted speed is, you've got every number there with duplicates on the fives and the fours. As far as charging, you should never have to get in this box except for to get to these signs. All the batteries, battery charger, everything else is preset, and your plug-in's on the exterior side. So there shouldn't be a whole lot of need once you have your reflective sign to be back in this box. One thing to note, you do have three padlocks. They're the Master Lock Padlock Series. There's two for the back and one for the front. One thing to note on these, the key will not come out until it's locked. So when you put this in, you cannot pull the key back out until it's locked. So when you do, when you do this on, you're gonna have the key already in it. There we go. 
There we go. So, a little bit tricky, as you can see. All right, as far as jack legs, I'm sure you've all deployed a trailer. Pull out, rotate downward, that easy. Make sure these are deployed when you go to deploy the trailer for any length of time. In the event that this trailer does get hit by a vehicle, rare I know, it might get slung into the roadway if those jack legs are not down, cause more damage to other vehicles as well as more damage to the trailer. So make sure those are deployed in the event that it gets hit by a vehicle. It will at least stop it on the side of the road, which we've tested just to make sure. Another thing you've got here is the axle lock. So you just unbolt this right here. It slides through the axle. So you'll have a lock on each side, one on this side, one on that side. that will go through that and it'll be an axle lock. If you do deploy that, Make sure that you take it out before you tow it. As far as your cameras, your housings are located right here. So there's grip tape where you can stand to get up here to access them if you need to get up a little bit. There's two cameras. There's two latches on each side. These latches are lockable, so if you do want to lock there, no one can remove this camera when these latches are locked but you can still get your hand in there to rotate it. So on the back of each camera, you'll see two thumbnail screws. What I normally like to do is just loosen it to a point where I can still move this camera around, but it doesn't just drop like that whenever I let it go. So keep it decently tight where you can still move it around for aiming purposes and it will be extremely easy to aim. It has a very large sweet spot, which is the area that it can capture tags. So it's gonna be a little bit easier, easier to aim than even your mobile units are, but you're gonna to wanna to key it in. So like I said before, the glowing hot license plates are going right through the IR field of view. All right, once you're done there, close this back down and relatch the lashes. One thing you do wanna make sure, the IR illuminators are hidden behind this black painted plexicon so if your IR illuminators are too far up and they, it is painted in black inside of that camera enclosure, but it still will reflect a little bit. So if you're seeing a white out, like where the IR view is looking like it's really whited out and it's not a black screen you're looking at, make sure you pull this camera back down so that your infrared view is not aiming directly at the enclosure top itself. All right, don't forget, you can always move things around too with your jack leg. If you need to elevate a little bit higher, bring it down a little bit, if the road's built up, you can always adjust it as well with your, your legs so it doesn't always have to be as camera ball. So if you're trying to get up higher, but this is at the top of the enclosure, you can jack the front legs up a little bit taller and get your extra height there rather than trying to aim the camera up. All right, that's pretty much the entire trailer body. You've got a four pin adapter. So if you have a seven socket plug on your truck, you will need a four pin adapter AutoZone, you know, any of your auto parts stores, they're cheap, I think like 10 bucks. You plug your four pin in, it goes right in your seven socket. Two inch ball, all the trailers have a two inch ball. It's your standard size, shouldn't be a problem there for anybody. The actual speed display itself. There's gonna be three keys. There's gonna be the, the one to the master lock. There's an additional one for this lock on the front, these little latches. If it's gonna be deployed out, for a while where it's not gonna be, you know, not gonna be somebody sitting right there with it. I always advise putting a master lock on. They'll have to rip this entire box apart to get to it. If it's just these two latches, you take a crowbar, you knock those off, they're into that box. So if it's gonna be deployed for a long length of time, I always say put the master lock here on the front. And we'll go through the electronics here in just a second. But your speed display, going to use this rounded South Coat key. So inside you're going to have two dials. One you're going to set to run. The second you're going to set to whatever the posted speed is. It's really that simple. As far as the speed display itself, it will ignore anything going with that. I mean it's still going to read the speed but it's not going to flash a slow down alert for anything going within five miles of the speed limit. Once it goes over that five miles per hour range, so if it's a 45 mile per hour speed limit, they're doing 51, it's gonna blink slow down and a flashing red and blue strobe are gonna come on in front of that sign. 
There's also a uh, high speed cutoff at like 25 miles per hour over the posted speed. That way people can't use it to test their cars and see how fast they can get a speed sign to go up to. All right. So speed sign is extremely simple. Once you're done, you set it back to off. That way that speed sign isn't staying on while it's charging. Everything should be off while it's charging. If you do have it deployed somewhere where you have power available and you want to plug it in, it will still charge it, but it will take longer to charge it from dead. It'll take around 26, 27 hours rather than the 18 if it's left on while it's charging. Your electronics box. Open it up right here. You're going to have a flip out keyboard. So you're going to flip this out. Then you're going to have a single power switch that's going to turn on the entire unit. It's one button push right here. You'll see that light light up red. And then your MiFi is going to come up. On your MiFi, we're going to try and change this in the settings so you don't have to select this every time. But in the event we're not able to, you're going to select the right arrow key one. And it's going to say charge or tether, char tether plus charge. You want this to be USB tether so it's tethering the Wi-Fi connection to the computer inside this box. So I'm going to select tether, USB on, and it's going to tell me I've got signal. Perfect. So we're connected with that now. Next step is to pull up on your monitor. All right, everybody, so I've remote into one of our trailers that's in the field. I'm waiting on the software licensing still on this one. Plus, you'll be able to see live traffic coming through this device, all right? So when you first, when the software first starts up, as soon as you hit that power switch, it's going to automatically launch all of your software, which is basically just a car detector fix software, okay? So this is the screen that you're going to be looking at when the, software, when the computer first starts up. It's going to have your automatic, your, the trailer name. This trailer right here is going to be... 16J038 dash interdiction. Those ones are both the property crime, so same thing, the trailer numbers, and then property crimes task force PCTF, um, trailer one and trailer two. So your trailer names will be right here. You're gonna hit this login button. The password is gonna be automatically saved in there, and you're gonna hit login. It's gonna automatically populate two cameras on the left hand side, camera one and camera two. All right, you're gonna see them both have a red circle at the start. That red circle should go away fairly quickly. It's gonna take it a second to load up, find the cameras, and then you'll see that red circle disappear. If you hover your mouse over it, it will say that it's still loading. Come on. There we go. All right. So the first thing I always do once the cameras come up, wherever I deploy this thing, it does have GPS. So it's going to automatically find the location where this trailer is deployed. Um, keep in mind, the GPS is not live updating. So the software has to restart. So if you tow this trailer from one location to another, make sure you shut it down prior to towing it. That way, when you turn it back on, it finds the current GPS location. All right. The first thing I always do with the cameras is just verify they're both working. To do that, I double click on the camera name itself and I go right here to video view. So in the video view, you'll see two panes. You'll see the infrared and the color. Remember before I said you're always going to want to aim off the infrared view. So you're looking for the, the license plate to be coming right through the center of this field of view with the camera. If it is three lanes, that will change a little bit. You're going to have to do a little bit more tweaking to aim this trailer at three lanes or potentially four lanes than you would two. In a three lane situation, your interior camera is gonna be grabbing the, the near lane and the middle lane, and your exterior camera is gonna be grabbing the middle lane and the outside. So you're gonna have some overlap. I always say I'd rather have duplicate reads or duplicate hits rather than miss something I wanna get. So don't be worried if you're getting duplicates, but you wanna make sure you're getting around 90, 95% read rate inside that lane. To do that, you're going to want the first lane to be coming right to the bottom of the view and the middle lane to be coming right to the top of the view. You're not going to be able to center on one lane because you're trying to capture a wider field of view. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. So right here you can see the vehicles coming through as well. You're going to get the overview image of the license plate and the close-up image of that, of that tag. All right. So what I normally do when I'm deploying these 
So I count 10 cars. I wait, I wait for 10 cars to come through. If I hit nine out of 10, normally I call that camera good. If you're trying to get 10 out of 10 every time, you're gonna spend all day tweaking that camera and it's, it's probably not gonna get a lot better. Um, there are those you're gonna, miss, one of, you're gonna miss as well. It's not 100%. Another thing to notice, if you're having a lot of misreads, so uh, nines and S's, B's and eights, it could be the degree of angle that the camera's at. You're gonna wanna keep this camera between a five and a 25 degree of angle to the roadway. You don't want it aiming straight on and you don't want it tilted as far to the left as you can possibly get it because then you're gonna be start getting some misreads. So one of the other things to note, if that plate is coming through extremely blown up where it's cutting off exterior digits, you're gonna to wanna to move that camera further down the roadway. So for instance, if I had this camera aimed like this right now and the tags were cutting off digits, it was cutting off the end digit or cutting off the beginning digit, I'd wanna move it further away so that tag is getting smaller as the field of view goes further out, all right? So right now I've got these ball mounts where you can see I can still manipulate it, but it stays where I put it after I get done manipulating it. When you're aiming it, that's how you want to have it set. Once you get done, you're going to want to lift this back up and lock it down so that it doesn't kind of slowly tilt down with gravity over a few days. Another thing I like to do here, when I first get started, you hit this system configuration button right here in the bottom left. You'll have a green light that says connection to learn. That means you're connected. So that means all of your tags are going up. They'll be able to send alert within about 10 to 12 seconds of passing that vehicle. It'll be available through learn in the same amount of time. So meaning within 10 seconds of this vehicle passing, one of the detectives can go in and search that tag and they'll have a hit back on the website. All right. So all of your other settings inside this system configuration button should be preset, should be nothing you have to set up there. The only other thing to check, you'll see where it says hot list records acquired. You want to make sure it's at least downloaded some kind of records in the past 24 hours and that your hot list number looks like the total number of hot plates that you have on your mobile unit or they're available through the state. All right. So you can see also see the total number of plates transferred. In the event you do lose cell connection, all the plates are going to buffer locally to this trailer and they're going to update as soon as internet connection is restored. So cell card goes out, no big deal. It'll store it here for around 30 days locally is what I've got it set to. It can store it longer, but 30 days is what I've got it set to by default. So also your plate record, plate, plates transferred is right around, what is that? Two, three, right, at a, right over a million. So you'll be able to get your plates transferred there as well. All right. The only other thing I do before I button this up is I check GPS location and I name the camera names, the roadway and the direction of travel this trailer's at. The officer, once he gets that alert, like you guys through Taz, you can hit map it, and it's gonna pull up the map, and it's gonna show him exactly where that trailer is, but that officer's not gonna know the direction of travel you're going unless you name the camera names. So when you see that Taz alert pop up, the first thing it says is camera name. What I always do is name it a roadway, Smith Road and 183 westbound, or whatever it would be, I name it. So the first thing that officer sees once he gets that alert is the intersection and direction of travel that vehicle's headed. To do that, I right click on the camera itself. It's gonna pop up a little box. You're gonna see it says rename, the very bottom option. I click rename and I can then name this camera. Whatever I want. All right. The only other thing as far as checking the GPS, I go right here to the system configuration button the bottom left again and you'll see some tabs right up here at the top. Say basic slash com, alarm data, alarm configs, and DSP slash camera management. I'm gonna click the DSP camera management. You're gonna highlight the camera and there's a little pinpoint right here, like a pinpoint on a map at the bottom in the center. I'm gonna click that and just make sure my GPS location is accurate with where that trailer is deployed. If it is, Great, no problems. If it's not, right here on the top left where it says settings, it'll say use GPS device, uncheck that box, and then recheck it again, and it should force that GPS to update. If it doesn't, that's when you call us, we'll make sure everyone has a tech support number, 
We can remote into these trailers at any time. Do not be afraid to call tech support, even if it's something as simple as helping aim a camera. We can remote in, we can tell you go a little bit up, go a little bit down. We definitely do that during the demo testing, so don't be afraid to do it. It takes about two to three weeks on average is what I see for officers, you know, once they start deploying this thing, to be comfortable and be able to deploy in about 10 minutes with a single officer. All right. Um, that's pretty much the software overview. I mean, the next part is deploying it, getting everything linked up to TAS and making sure you can connect to it through target alert service. We've built this to be as simple <coughs> as possible. There's not a whole lot of things you should have to do outside of aiming this camera when you're deploying this trailer. One more time, the uh, cameras always have to be named to the direction of travel and the intersection those cameras are located at. That way when the officer receives the alert, and I'll show you right over here on target alert service. So when I pull up Taz and I go to my stored alerts, there we go. The first thing that officer is going to see is the camera name right here. He can map it, but that takes time. So you always want the officer to be able to see northbound uh, North Miami Beach Boulevard and Northeast 10th Avenue. This was in Miami Beach. So he can quickly see the avenue. I know exactly where that trailer is now without waiting to go through map it for Google Earth to load. I now know exactly where that is and the direction of travel that vehicle is going. So that's very important. Make sure you're naming the cameras when you go to pull the trailer. Yep. So if it's, if it's too dark, that means the IR is shooting at too long of a range. You need to bring it back towards the direction of the, the traffic is coming from. So back in this event, the traffic, the traffic will be passing this way. You're going to want to bring the camera back this direction. If it's too bright and it's widening it out, the plate's too bright, it's probably aiming a little bit too close and you need to move it opposite direct, direction the traffic is coming from. So it's shoot, shooting further down the roadway. Same exact thing with blown up that I was talking about earlier with the tags being blown up and cutting off the ends or appearing too, too far out, basically dark and very hard to see. Is there a max speed or is there a, a like it says recommended, the, not on the highway? Or is it no, no, highway is fine. It's rated right up to, the cameras do right around 130 miles per hour. So if they're exceeding that, they're exceeding that they've probably got another issue than just LPR hit anyway. Yep, do not tow it like this. It basically creates, you're all familiar with parasailing, basically creates a parasail. Hopefully you've got a very strong truck and a tow hitch. Um, as far as, good point though with parasail. As far as winds, we do have these down in Florida. Um, we have gotten hurricane wind conditions with them. I do not advise it. Um, it will eventually bend your solar panels up, bend the mount up, 60 mile per hour winds, anything below, above that you're going to want to take this whole trailer body down and stow it and preferably have it indoors. I've had lenses spray painted before. These being black, it's not quite as obvious that we have to use clear in Florida. So I've had lenses spray painted. I've had trailers spray painted. Um, since my last time here, I've had someone raise all four jack legs and flip it over on a busy road at five o'clock, which was mind blowing to me. Um, but there's not a whole lot they can do. They can get inside of here. They cannot remove the camera because they can't get in to get the bolts out. So they can't remove the camera. You can. The issue with it is, is it has to be so close against this, against the, the, where that lens is. Because if, it's any, if it's, there's space between it, it's going to start to reflect and it's going to start to white out the cameras. So it's, it's not recommended, but we, we could do something if we want to in the future.